Welcome to the video lecture on pressure and how it changes as your depth changes within a fluid. This follows along in section 11.3 of your textbook. Here we go. Objects float due to a difference in pressure between the force or pressure exerted on the top of the object and the pressure exerted on the bottom of the object. This depends on the area. It's really a force applied on the top of the object and the force applied on the bottom of the object, depending on the area of that object that is where that fluid is exerting a pressure. For example, a piece of wood floating in water, there's the weight of the wood directed downward. There's also a downward pressure due to the air. This is less than, or those two forces downward are less than, um, in e individually less than the magnitude of the pressure or the force directed upward from the water. If it's floating in, in equilibrium, then the object, then those all those forces will sum to zero. If we separate a column within a fluid and we look at it, so we take some column with some height h, some uh, area on the top and the bottom of A, there are really two types of forces acting on it. One is the weight of that column of fluid. Um, that's due to uh, the actual material of the fluid and how much in the volume. And that's directed, the weight is directed downward. The other force is the collisional force. This is due to all the molecules within the fluid that are directed both downward on the top of the, that column and upward on the bottom of that column. In a second, I'll show you a quick little video to get an idea of collisional forces due to air molecules. Now, within a fluid of liquid, if the, the molecules are moving a little bit, they're moving much slower and they're much more, they're much closer together. And it's more, you're trying to, as you go down to deeper depths, you're trying to compact them into a smaller space, which they don't, which is not easy to do. Um, in this situation, we're gonna look at a column of a fluid that is in equilibrium. So that means all the forces are going to sum to zero. If this column of fluid is in equilibrium, that means that the net force is zero, and that means all the upward forces are balanced by the downward forces. So here we have the upward force due to the pressure on the bottom, that's P2, is equal to the force downward due to the pressure on the top, that's P1, and the weight plus the weight. Dividing by the area of the top and the bottom, because it's going to be the same for a column of fluid, or any column, um, we get out that pressure 2 at the bottom is equal to pressure 1 at the top plus rho GH. Remember, rho is density, which is mass over volume, so that's how we get the H at the top, because we need that extra um, dimension there. So, pressure 2, or the we can actually, if you were to change it over, the change in pressure is equal to the density of the object times the acceleration due to gravity times the height or the distance between that, that change of pressure occurs. Rho GH or density times the acceleration due to gravity, this is known as the pressure increment. This really says that as you go down some depth, there's going to be a change in pressure. But down some depth within a fluid, or up some depth within a fluid, there's going to be a change in pressure. Notice that this only depends on the vertical distance traveled, h, not the horizontal distance. So if we look here in our example on the bottom right, if you're going from point A to point B, the actual change in pressure is going to be zero because as you go up from A to A prime, you uh, experience a decrease in pressure. And then as you go horizontally from A to B prime, there's no change in pressure because you're not changing your depth. And then as you go downward, you have an increase in pressure. So there's a zero net increase in pressure between points A and B in the drawing on the bottom right. And it's also one other thing here. Assume that the density is always going to be the same for all fluids unless otherwise known. We will probably not deal with any situation where the density changes throughout a fluid. 
And the reason is that the air is made of little molecules in here, which are bashing away at the sides of this and hitting the piston. So if I push it up, they find that this piston, there are too many of them, and they're hitting this piston so much that it's pushing it down. And I had to do work to squeeze this to get the volume to change. So I'd like to illustrate this using Julian to operate this apparatus, because I use these apparatus and they break down. This apparatus is a scaled up version, so you can see the molecules. These molecules will move around, I mean they're steel ball bearing, and they will move up and bash around as though they were particles in the air. Now, Julian, could you turn it on and we can see how it goes. So now I would like to put in a piston. Here is a, a polystyrene piston which more or less fits the thing and will float down slowly until it covers that. Now, if you turn it on gently when it gets down near the bottom, you'll see that it will bash into this and hold it. And the more energetically Julian puts the energy into this, the higher this piston gets. And if he turns it way up, it will move all the way up. And you can see these particles bashing into the piston. And as they bash into it, it pushes it up more and more. So here is a problem for the end of the day. A submarine cruises at a depth of 300 meters. What is the pressure at this depth? The density of seawater is 1,030 kilograms per meter cubed. Understand that the initial pressure for when the depth is zero is not zero itself. The initial pressure is due to the pressure at sea level. Second question. Is the picture to the right possible? Why or why not? Notice that the two heights, D1 and D2, are not the same. And that the two tubes themselves are not in the same area, or not the same area overall. Look in your book for any help that you need. And finally, what is the pressure gradient? I've had a little trouble with some recording stuff tonight, so I hope things go all right. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.